Hi brothers and sisters, this is Ryan Zell. In this short video, I will prove that the church called Catholic makes known the wisdom of God and not the scriptures. Here is an incredible verse, Ephesians 3.10, that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God may now be made known to the principalities and the powers in the heavenly places. Notice that it is the church and not the scriptures that make known the wisdom of God. For this verse to be true, then the church must be protected from error in her doctrines. Otherwise, it cannot make known the wisdom of God. All heretics use the Bible to prove their heresies. Scripture can be twisted and manipulated to your own destruction. There is always some truth to a heresy. Otherwise, the heresy would never gain traction. This is a common fact. Brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul urges us to hold fast. But to hold fast to what? Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and which you also stand, by which you are also saved. If you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. Fortunately for us, the apostles never taught sola scriptura. This is exactly why St. Paul exhorts us to hold fast to the gospel he preached, not the gospel taught by the likes of a Luther, a Zwingli, or a Calvin, and those that came after them. They are the bad leaven spoken to us by Jesus Christ. If we do not listen to the divine words of St. Paul, we believe in vain, much like the unscriptural gospels that Protestantism has developed over the past 500 years. 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours, by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter is telling us that we should have the same faith as the apostles. This is the faith that is a righteousness that is from God, not the Christ created in the image and likeness of the reformers, or the 40,000 variations of this Christ. It is like nobody seems to think there is something wrong with 40,000 denominations and cults within Protestantism. Now we will look at the heterodox. One God, one Christ, one Bible, and one Reformation producing 40,000 and growing denominations, cults, and sects. Does anybody recognize that Satan is in the works? 2 Corinthians 11, 3 and 4. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. For if one comes and preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or you receive a different gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. 2 Thessalonians 2.11 for this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they will believe what is false. God will separate out the unelect who by their own free will have rejected the body of Christ, his church, which is to reject Christ himself. 2 Timothy 3, 7, who are always being instructed and can never arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Who is St. Paul describing here? the heterodox, who are not members of the church, but who were and are preaching false gospels. St. Paul is describing the condition of men in the last days who are always learning and never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. These people are the ones who idolize the Bible and believe that the Bible is the pillar and bulwark of the truth and not the church. The church is the pillar and bulwark of the truth. 2 Timothy 4.3 for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings. We have been warned, brothers and sisters, but who are these teachers? In the beginning of the infant church, first came the Judaizers, then came the Gnostics and Dualists, then came the Arian heretics, then the Ebonites, the Sibelians, the Docetists. And then... Eventually came the Reformers, led by Martin Luther, Ehrlich Zwingli, and John Calvin, and all those who came after them. 
Thus started the great apostasy of the church, and all hell broke loose, and it became a free-for-all for all these unknown and unheard of doctrines and gospels to the tune of now over 40,000 denominations and cults today. Paul warned us with these words, I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among our, your own selves will arise men speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples from them. He is speaking of heretics coming into the church and seeking to lead her members astray. Paul is not saying that the universal and Catholic church will be led astray or that the magisterium of the church will be taken over by these wolves. That would have been to deny the very purpose of Christ establishing a magisterial authority in his church. But thanks be to God, they can never prevail against the magisterium of the church, which Christ established and through which he continues to govern his church. We believe that the Holy Spirit is protecting Christ's church. We believe he is guiding her into all truth, preventing the gates of hell from prevailing against her. There were continuous onslaughts from the forces of darkness. Dissent, heresy, and schism do occur. God permits heresy so that the Catholic Church must defend her doctrines. What does Jesus tell us? In John 16, 12 and 13, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he bears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. Examples include the revelation that Christ is the second person of the Blessed Trinity, that the Incarnation occurred, that there is a hypostatic union, and the Marian doctrines. With the promise that the Holy Spirit is to guide the Church, Christ does teach many doctrines that weren't taught during his time with us in his human nature. He has revealed doctrines and dogmas over time when we were ready to understand and accept them, and this under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 13, there are seven parables on the kingdom of heaven, which is the church here on earth. Another parable he put before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. The parable of the mustard seed tells us that there will be growth and development in doctrine. Jesus founded a church as the ordinary means in which to encounter him, not a Jesus and me movement, guaranteed it against the powers of hell, gave it the full authority to convict his body and blood under the guise of bread and wine, gave it the authority to forgive or retain sins, and he never abandoned it. He promised to send his Holy Spirit to guide his church into all truth. That presupposes that there were things not yet understood or in need of development, such as the Trinity, the divine humanity of Christ, and many other vital truths which needed to be clarified for us over time. This is the Zell Challenge channel. Please consider subscribing and joining in the discussion and debates. Hold fast to the Catholic Church, which was given the faith handed down to the saints once for all. God bless you all.